right, let's get started. Um, my name is Vaxili, I work for Yahoo, and I'm going to talk about GitHub, and I have to say that I'm not affiliated with GitHub at all, it's just that I like the site a lot, and I use it for all my open source projects, which are mostly CPAN modules. What is GitHub? Uh, GitHub is no replacement for CPAN. CPAN is the distribution server where you put your tarballs. GitHub is something similar like SourceForge or Google Code, where you check your stuff in, have revision control, work together with other people, and then release stuff that eventually ends up on CPAN. Um, what, what, is, what is really special about GitHub? GitHub is what, what they call a, a social um, coding site. So it's, it's similar to uh, Facebook maybe, and, and then you have your contacts, and you, you follow other people, and you get notifications when they check something in. And uh, it, it, it's a nice way to watch what other people are doing, and um, let, let them contribute with you, and, and add to your projects, and, and vice versa, add to their projects. And it's very user centric you can pull up the page, and then there's a picture there, and you can see all the projects that you're working on and all the projects that your friends are working on. You can um, follow other people's projects with RSS feeds. And um, if the, the, the real point about using GitHub and, and um, one of the other sites is that it's very easy to contribute to somebody else's project. Um, if you set a patch to somebody else, you need to figure out their email address, and you need to get access to the mailing list. Um, you, you need your message approved. You, you need to format your patch in a certain way. Somebody needs to look at that patch, needs to apply, and needs to send a message back. It takes forever. So the pain in the ass, the, the PIA threshold is quite high with other projects, but on, on GitHub it's all integrated. And then all you do is use the web page in order to get your patch in, and on the other hand, on the, on the receiving end, somebody who's uh, using your patch just clicks a button and the patch is in. So that leads to, to an explosive growth. Um, so several projects have moved to GitHub, like Ruby on Rails, you, you might be familiar with that, has experienced explosive growth since they are on GitHub. Rakudo, the process implementation on Ampere, has moved, moved to GitHub. And because this, this threshold of contributing has been lowered so far, it is that, that these projects have really been taken off. And I've seen it with my project too. I mean, the minute they're out there, people just contribute because it's so easy to do. Um, you probably, if you're sitting in this room, you've uh, attended uh, Ricardo's talk on Git, and I can really add to that that it's the best thing that has happened in years. It's so fast. Um, that you, you can't believe it if, if you've been working with the uh, subversion. There, there's just no way of going back. Even if your manager doesn't allow you to use Git, you're going to use it anyway, because it's just so fast to do things. Um, and, and your entire history is local, right? So if you're sitting on a plane and you want to check out revision one of your project, you can't do that because you don't need network access. Everything is on your hard drive, right there for the thing. Um, and there's some additional benefits if you're working in large projects. Everything you put in is actually guaranteed to come out again, which is not true for subversion if your disk, for example, is corrupted. Um, and network transfers are very optimized. So if you've ever tried to figure out if your subversion repository was up to date or your CDS repository, it can take forever because it's Change to fix the sends a lot of requests through the network, but Git returns instantly. So I have a quick demo on what you can do with Git. Just to add what um, Ricardo has done. So this is the Perl core repository. Perl has also moved to Git, not to GitHub, but I think a copy of it is, is on GitHub. 
But let's say I wanted to know what what has happened in the entire Git repository of um, in, in the Perl core. And that's it. I'm going to go all the way back to 1987. Mm -hmm. Larry Wong uh, released the first version. Within a couple of seconds, on this very slow machine, I can go up to all the, the logs and go back to this first release. Now, let's say I wanted to um, create a branch that's based on this release. All I need to do is use that. And you can see that within a fraction of a second, it created a branch. Now, if, if I want to see, let's say, what, what did Perl look like uh, at, at the beginning of time? What, what was the first thing that Derry did? Here we go. Not many files. And also, node. References of uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> now, if we go back, we use the main branch. It takes a couple of seconds to recreate the, the latest um, git. Now, I'm back to where we are today. We can go through every check in, not, not only the logs, but also the check ins. The tool called Pickaxe, and I'm going to figure out who put all these uh, all of the uh, references into the program since 1987. Now, this is not only going through the logs; it is going through the, every single diff. There is 32,000 commits since the beginning of time. Now, here's a guy who fixed something, obviously, and this one is interesting. I checked the, that on the plane. On the plane without network access, just to let you know. And I can I can check what what did uh, Tom Christiansen do with this check-in? Oh, see, he, he he added all the the the, the to the quotes. He, he added the references to the book. Got a lot of files there. So this was just a small tangent. If you want to use GitHub. Yeah, really quick, um, when you did that uh, search for, was it a search for token? Was that all ads or all including the moves of the token? The, the question was, when, when I'm looking for this token references, uh, whether that was just additions or changes. And the answer to that is, it looks for changes that have a different number of additions and deletion. So if you have one edition, that's uh, a, a reference, and if you have one deletion, that's a reference. But if you have one edition and one deletion, it's not going to show. So it's calculating the difference. Now, before you can use GitHub, this collaboration site, um, you need to convert your existing project to Git, obviously. There's tools that come with Git. One is called uh, CBS Import, which asks you that you have a local copy of the repository, which is not that easy if you're, let's say, hosting on SourceForge. But there's a way to rsync your copy. You just go to SourceForge and um, look, look for backup, backup your project. Then you can pull it down and then run uh, git CBS Import on it. And by then you have a local Git repository, which you can then push to GitHub. Um, with SVM, with Subversion, it's a little bit better because you don't need it locally. You can point it to the remote uh, repository, create your local Git repository, and push that one over. So both CVS and SVM can be converted to uh, Git. Now, if, if you attended Ricardo's talk, you've seen a lot of those. And I'm using the same arrows, by the way. I don't like this backwards notation because I think it's confusing. Um, so, so if you read the Git book, they usually point the other way, but I think arrows should point into